Ecstatic, it's not like we're going into a map where it's like, oh, again, G2 heavily favored. Sure, in terms of experience against tier one opposition, yes, G2, they're in the circuit, they, they're used to these kind of situations. Some very but, legit wins as well yeah, for them on Yeah, for Anubis. sure, beat FaZe, you know, the RMR, like, they, they look good on this map, but Ecstatic also frequent Anubis, and they've got, you know, the reps in, and that's something that these younger, hungry teams always have, uh, reps. They they play so much online, they play so much in the you know, qualification to get to the RMR through that open and close. So, yeah, let's, uh, you know, c counting out Ecstatic at this point would be a very silly move to make. So I hope G2 don't do the same as we enter this absolutely must-win map for G2. Three good wins on this map for Ecstatic in a row as well. G2, yeah. their last result was an L. So uh, even coming in in terms of how you're feeling about the map, Ecstatic have a, a good deal to look forward to. I think if Ecstatic do want to win this, it's important to keep G2 in the negative headspace that they're in. And so oh. if they can win the pistol here, they will be off to a uh, the, the best start they could have possibly hoped for. Not a bad way to open. Kragan takes it one step further. Next are a Monacy with kills a piece in reply and Hunter creeping out through the camera. Oh, Freebie no. is right there! Oh god, Hunter! A colossal whiff to give this one up in a 2v2. And now they lose control of middle, they lose control of camera. That puts pressure on Monacy and Nexa. They have to flush these wow. players out. And that's easier said than done. Kragan with the third. And it's all left on to Nexa, tap of the bomb, but Ecstatic don't have to peek, they don't have that pressure. And Nexa is blindsided by the man back in Con. It's a done deal in the pistol Dude. with Ecstatic picking it up. Starting T-side Anubis for your elimination spot. I don't think you could be in a better place uh, if you're Ecstatic here. An, an explosive pistol where Nico just gets his feathers ruffled and plucked in mid. Gooshed on the first peak. What a peak for Crag and lots of Monacy as well. Look like the Julies were good for that. But now we have Ecstatic in a pivotal position to run away with an early lead. G2 want to do everything in their power to stop that. There was a force back for them on the T side of Vertigo, but this pales in comparison. Five sevens and Deagles and a fast A play. There's no one here. They, they go through the G2 spawn smoke on A main. These guys are confident right now. G2 fans quaking in their boots. And we have to start to consider as well for Nico in particular, someone who has always been at the the top, top levels of individuals in Counter-Strike, someone who never got a chance to leave his legacy in Mages and go, he is acutely aware of that as well. And you can imagine every bone in his body wanted CS2 to be different, wanted to leave more of an impression from the get-go. There is a very real world where uh, G2 face more heartbreak in at the Mages to open up the Counter-Strike 2 major circuit. Yeah, have your Mac 10 boys. We literally don't care. That's what Ecstatic say. They get out with the guns. They get out with a smile on their face. A 2-0 lead. And with history to be made for this young Danish squad, five debuting players to a major, the start of a new game, the first major in Denmark, a country that has produced so many legends in Counter-Strike, teams and individuals, and with so many of them not here, Ecstatic are taking the reins and they are riding off. 2-0, Deagles again, and they will strike. Nico gets a kill, there's a gun swap Kraken, getting a little cocky, not ready for the re-swing. He tries to cycle that weapon out of position. Salazar gets a kill on aggressive B play, but there's still a 3v4 in play. Hooksy needs to give that gun to someone with a little more health. And Monacy goes for an AK in mid as well, as Ecstatic make it very clear where they're ending. Bomb gonna get planted. Going back in main will be powerful with this bomb plant. And G2 with no kit are on the clock. Every reason to go for this if you're G2 and reasons to be paranoid if you're ecstatic, but they set up to play around the bomb. Even stopping around like this is a big win for the mental of ecstatic. 
And one that's going to get in the heads of G2 because it feels so winnable. It feels right there for the taking, especially with this util in play. Smoke on the bomb, Molly in main. They can't go through this. Queenix has got to land the spam oh my from God. afar. He doesn't get him off in time, but the nade from downtown will do it. Queenix pulls up and a 1v2 from the get-go of Anubis stops that round from spiraling out of control. It felt like G2's utility was perfect while it still somehow gets one-upped with a 10-second stick. It was just not meant to be nade on the bomb. And ecstatic, despite a kerfuffle in middle, are able to close this. Rifle round now, a release of tension. As Ecstatic don't get upset in the opening stage, but this is when G2 hit the hardest. Monesty's got an AWP over at the B side, and it seems like Ecstatic all game just want to abuse this A side. It's only next to here, latest edition, and first disrupted as they just run through the smoke yet again. Remember how on Vertigo it was Queenix getting bullied in a lot of those rounds over towards B, how they, they kept trying to get in his head and kind of take him out of the game on a, on a singular level? Well, that's what they're doing to Nexa right now. Someone who's had a lot of attention, someone who's had a lot of eyes on him. I mean, even folks calling for his head at yeah. points. You know, I think it's a very sound candidate to try and bully and to try and get in the brain of early on. Because as Nexa calls for support, as they have to sacrifice more areas of the map to lend a helping hand towards A, you end up conditioning your opponent to, to worry more about that side, to dedicate more resources over there. And so later on, as this game continues, you're going to weaken other areas of the map for G2 the thing that would be a disaster for G2 is if they're forced to play super defensively towards that A site early on, if they're forced to dedicate players there. And so they're kind of playing to the reaction of Ecstatic. They're letting them set the pace early as a favorite, uh, as the team that was supposed to win this matchup. That's not the mindset you want to be in. Yeah, we just saw Kragen with his mic up to shout across the hall back at G2. Remember Hooksy's, you know, very aggressive smack talk in the first map and it continued even into the second silenced now great move from patty as well an in-game leader that has been able to put up good numbers while he leads this young squad he gets chased out of middle after they find the 5v4 he smokes off the water meaning that nico can't even chase him and those dark players who want to flank and try and retake they are simply not given the option sure g2 save all their guns but they get their choice taken away from them to compete for that round. And already, time out in this game, it feels like a precedent has to be set to give Nexa some support. That will weaken areas of the map. Can Ecstatic find those holes? Honestly, with the mid spawn. Or really a spawn for wherever he pleases. We see him take it A-side. Instant anti-rush Molotov and he posts up for a change. They've already put Nexus towards B for an aggressive play. Blocking as they send double nades onto Nodios. Nice move for G2. They don't have to overdo They've this, got but Molly trapped. does trap Hooksy out in the open. He can't even take a free kill. Nodios is a shot from death, and Hooksy whiffs. So that there, we talk about how G2 don't want to be on the defensive, how they want to be the ones exerting map control. That's what G2 just attempted, and it looked very good from the offset, but Ecstatic's reply oh was even better. Push through main for Monacy, will net a kill to Queenix. That is something, that is a big kill to alleviate a lot of this pressure over towards A. It frees Monacy up a little bit more to reposition on that AWP, but the play's coming in fast. The play's coming in towards B. Nexa, back of the site. Man, they tried to volley early. Hunter Ooh. holds the line. Hunter. Can't deliver the final kill. And so it's a clutch. Patty versus Monacy. Monacy was the man who at the top of this series had clutches coming out the wazoo. And this one is no exception. He'll nail Patty on the smoke push. And so a much needed clutch round from the clutch AWPA of G2 put on the board to get them one early. Yeah, Brain v Braun and Patty, uh, uh, Patty overthinks it. It just goes straight through that smoke. Trying to... Catch Monacy off guard.
It's what Ecstatic were even doing a lot on Inferno, the first map of the series. They play very aggressive. They tried to suffocate G2. They got choked out in that first map, 13 to 7. And Monacy hitting the air as he takes the first round win for G2. They needed that. They need something to build upon in this game. Aggressive again. Hooksy gives it another shot, but they're holding from passive positions. Perfect play for Queenix. Even expecting more, but it's Nexa in the site. Oh, they go right they through. They, they try to play into him. Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah, he that, crashed. That's unfortunate. That's even more tilting for G2. Oh, that's. Flashing yeah. Amir and Nico dead, pushing on the back of it. Monacy, the, the one man army of this G2 squad, the one guy Ooh. who might have something oh, oh, oh. to say about Ecstatic's He's run here at the Major. He's got the bomb down at his feet, up in rugs. Hunter here alongside him. Hunter with the spray will at least deal with Kragen. And so Monacy provides the kills that are the turning point of this round. And now it's just Queenix in a world of hurt. What a relief for G2. Imagine how that round would have felt if Nexa, who presumably tabbed out or something, loses it when his opponent's running through a Molotov. Queenix is going to try and squeeze everything he can out of this 1v2. But I want to see his holding that flank. Hunter has the power position for the bomb. Here we go, Queenix. Was the star of Vertigo. Give it a go, go. As the smoke fades, Monacy now has to consider main, so he's got two players looking his way, ready for this fight. Missed shot from Monacy, but Hunter, with the reswing, will lock it down. And it feels like Mon Monacy's bringing the energy to this game right now, like just off of these two rounds, we're seeing it look very vocal, very animated. I mean, he, he literally has to. You he know? has to like, save his team, if, Harry. It, if it's not for Monacy in that round there, you're looking at a situation where Ecstatic start running away with the T side. And so Monacy is very aware of the pressure he is under he is aware that he has to be the guy to stand and deliver for the G2 I mean, squad because at the minute it feels like no one else will. Feels like a guy that doesn't even break under the pressure. We see his first you know stage game at Katowice and he was just unbelievable on that first map on Mirage. Such a young player with so many more Strong years in CS, but majors are where it really matters. Majors are where you make your legacy. And G2, Nico, Monacy, these are names that have not finished what they started when it comes to this major circuit. What I think we're going to see across this third map is really the the, the limit test of Monacy. I think that is the, the writing on the walls right now. At least from these first few rounds, as far as the eye test goes, he's been the guy to offer up both rounds that G2 currently have. And you can just tell from how he's playing, his goal is to be super active and oppressive all across yeah. the map. It's, it's almost like avoid Monacy at this point, right? Like that's, that's what the T side is going to feel like. You see that orb, you run the other way, and he's going to keep them guessing, starting in different positions. Even the rooting in that round there, right? Yeah. He takes a deep fight down a mid and immediately drops in the water and then is fighting you at rugs. These are not how your offer usually plays on the CT side, but, but that's what Monacy has to do if G2 wants to recover this. And over time, if Monacy picks up this performance and is able to keep this going, Ooh. that will inspire down the ranks. We saw that happen with Ecstatic on Vertigo. This might be the best start we've seen from Hunter in the series. He's been almost a non-factor today. It's a good shot down towards the water, finding the captain of Ecstatic. They want to come through, though. They want to hit this B bomb site. Flash from afar. Queenix puts Kraken in the picture, and now he needs to find this entry. Monacy nails it with the orb. Not missing a beat is this Monacy AWP. They blind him off the angle. Pressure is on, but Monacy. Good for one more. Brings Nico in through the smoke. Buys enough time for more players to move into this site. Monacy does all he has to in that round. And so now just Nodios left standing as he walks the talk through main. Ooh. Chatterbox in his hands. But all quiet on Ecstatic right now. 
as he tries to cook up a 1v2. Bomb is on his back. Can leave. Whole world is open to him right now. He just doesn't know where that second man of Nexa is, often the A player. The longer he leaves it, the more G2O will doubt this. So they're going to go clearing together and trying to enter the site. This could still give him an entry for free. The timing is good right now. He grabs Nexa. One, One health. health. 20 seconds. If he runs now, he can make it. Nico should hear this, might look to give chase. He's now moving in. Nodios is playing for the kill, oh. but he can't get it. And Nico does not fall down versus the one HP clutcher on the other side. Oh, just a little bit too deep in the water there. That headshot not quite connecting. And even so, Nico gets it done. A necessary round to continue this streak for G2. Nice try for Nodios. He's just fallen a little bit too short in these clutches. Not the same at the end of Inferno as well. Oh, <laughs> terrifyingly close. I don't think that's, you know, a hugely tilting round for no. Ecstatic though, right? Like he had the right idea. It's just he gets so, so wrecked in that first engagement. Ooh, Hunter. But you'd be surprised how quickly this can turn sour, especially with Hunter feeling inspired from these modesty performances. He's having a good start right now is Hunter. That's someone who's been missing across the series for G2. And they sent him up. They did a deep ace, uh, ace there smoke off, off of spawn so that he could fight towards water from dark. And when he notices Ecstatic, don't drop that Dark Smoke for once. Feels a lot more free. Feels like they're going to be coming. Nexa uh, giving support in middle. Two rifles moving in. Oh my god, timing's completely missed. Nico gets into safety though, and he doesn't it, need to fight. Monacy's if, here. If plays are ever being made, Monacy is there. Monacy is a part of them. He starts this round double fighting Dark with Hunter. And now he's looking to end the round over here in mid on a mid push with Nico. Monacy doing everything for G2 right now. Uh, and this AWP, it, once it's going like this, it's so hard to put a stop to him. You said it earlier on, this game might come down to trying to avoid Monacy. And I think that's going to be very hard with how he's playing. You don't know where he's going to start. You don't know where that opening move is going to come in. And by the time you even adjust to it, he will be completely... Uh, on the other side of the map, up and moving, always mobile, always making plays. This is exactly what G2 needed, and it might have come in their time of need to, to, to bail them out of this dire situation. Nico dead in mid, but Monacy is the man to close that round out. Didn't even see the last guy. Four kills from that AWP. Yeah. This is the limit test of Monacy on Anubis. Worth every penny. And with performances like this in must-win maps and matches, certainly sucked the life out of Ecstatic, who were on a bit of a hot streak to start this game, going for just constant A-rushes, abusing Nexa. Ever since that round where the bomb gets caught in rugs, it's been all G2. I mean, already this is a really good CT side, and, and it's only going to get better for G2 from here on out, right? They're still in control of the money. They're still in control of the game. They've got full control right now. And the difference is, on Vertigo, they were prepared to, to, to play into the overconfidence, to let that maybe get the better of them. Here, they won't do that. They're not going to underestimate their opponents. They won't be celebrating till the game is won. So that mental reset that we talk about, it looks like it's come through for G2, yeah. and it's massive helped out by Monesty just taking matters into his own hands and fully unleashing the, the full power of this Monesty AWP come this third map. Definitely does feel like Hooksy will be holding his tongue in this third one. Again, surrounding this B-bomb site from both sides. Like no one wants to be the guy that shit-talked across the hall, yelled at the opponents, and then gets banged out. Look at the last Danish captain that happened to. So here we are. Ecstatic, slow down in the water. They're going to start to group and peel their way over towards Dark. G2 with only two players here inside of the B site. And with Hunter and Hooksy, Hunters at least look good to open. But the only safe pair of hands, the only ones I would bet my house on right now is that Monacy AWP. And he's not here. He's not involved. So these rifles have got to hold on versus the pistols. It's a nice start for Hunter, oh, no. but it's quickly pulled back the other way. Nico makes a play, makes a move, trying to save the B site, but he can't get past Queenix. 
So that plant will come in for Ecstatic. Someone's got to get it, but they're so scared of timing. So I don't know if G2 have gotten close. It's going oh, to delay Monacy's the bomb. Oh, Monacy's set up now. They can get it. They can get it down. Oh my god, the molly on the site for Nexa. Burns Queenix crossing in, and now talk of a cross. Nodios has got to get past the impenetrable Monacy, who hits his shot every single time. Well contained on a round that could have got out of control very, very easily. Well handled. That molly from Nexa was huge as well. I, I didn't I didn't know how much impact he would get to have in that retake. He was smoked off at Temple. Really, it looked like Monacy was going to have to lock it down from the CT spawn. But the molly forcing that player with the bomb into the open never even survives the cross to Monacy because the molly burned him out. So fantastic stuff for Nexa there, honestly. Someone who, who got off to a bit of a rough start here on Anubis. I want to see Salazar's orb come through here. He's finally come through on the T side and... Let's see if we can find any results. Oh my god, the mid stack! And Kraken will just take one there. He's happy he even got a kill with that smoke break into three CTs. Now yeah, see Salazar's orb crawling forward, but they need a Molotov on this position. And Molly, they don't have good flash as Nex is set up for that entry. There's another one. Nade. Queen Nix delaying his peak. Trying to find the right timing to catch Nexa in the open. But G2 have finally offered him support. This made all the difference. Oh, the molly. It's just too late, isn't it? The nade on the smoke. Nexus already out of position. Nodios lurking in mid. They line up, but they're buddied up for that kill. Easily done. Four on two. Ecstatic just throwing themselves through. Finished off cleanly by Nexa. And, and this is a feel-good moment for G2. These rounds that were once close and once relied on heroics to pull back are now becoming a lot more dominant across the board. G2 can feel that they're retaking control over this game and at least over this map where it really matters. And we often say Hunt, a big game player, he's looked good. Nexa, stable over towards A after some hiccups early on. Yeah. The, the pieces are slowly but surely falling into place for the G2 squad. And six rounds on your CT side is already great. This is already enough. And that's without considering this is six in a row for G2 there, picking up steam, the rounds are getting more dominant, They're being more active. Again, a mid attempt. They've got a lot of util here. They're just going to bung it in mid, send it with pistols and MAC-10s. Try and put pressure on this A site. Got a temple smoke from Rugs. Trying to make this look like a quick mid to A. It's going to keep three players out of position. as Ecstatic back off. I mean, here's, here's the challenge for Ecstatic, right? Is that this game is a bit like a marathon. They'd already run the 10K. They were running out of fumes by the time we were getting through Vertigo. But then they do that final push to carry them a, a whole extra, you know, five kilometers. But suddenly now they're being tasked to do that all over again. And this time they've got to do it faster. They've got to do it better. They've got to be even better than they were at the end of Vertigo. And that is a huge ask for a team that is fresh faced to this environment fresh face to these stakes and this pressure. And so they might just crumble under the weight of their ambitions here. Patty, one on five, bomb away from him. And a backstab, best to hope of success, I guess. But there's no winning this round and he knows it. So he's just got to sit there and come to terms with that, that this is going to read seven or four. The best ecstatic can do is five. And that's with all these rounds being consecutively for G2. Ecstatic can feel that this one it is a different story to Vertigo. Yeah, it's a very reassuring look from G2. I think we all had our doubts after that 4-0 beginning for Ecstatic, where it feels like they're playing great team CS and you know, putting pressure on Nexa, who has recovered very strong in this game. And in a sense, Hooksy not having to top frag is a relief for G2 because he was in a, you know, he was he was performing very well individually on the last map, but that was more at the lack of the stars, the lack of players like Nico and Hunter. Well, they've had their moments here, and they needed to for G2. We've got another aggressive B play set up. Double flash through main. Nodios, ugly spray, and Hunter overwhelms him, even walking the mid smoke. Nico gets his desserts, and Monacy hits his as well. It's flowing for G2. There is no stopping them now on this streak. Eight straight rounds. And Queenix can do nothing about it. They are literally in his spawn.
It starts with Monacy on the CT side from the moment that that AWP has come out. G2 have not dropped a round. He rebuilds the identity of the team. He gives them that faith. And now it's just cascading through the squad. They are all playing with Monacy-esque confidence in this game. And that sees them through to a stellar CT half. A lot of the legwork is already done here. And for Ecstatic, a kind of familiar feeling of deflation setting in. This time, I don't know if they're going to have what it takes to pull themselves back into this game, to claw their way yeah. up the oily and, and bloody totem pole towards victory. It feels like G2 have got them right where they want them. It definitely is slipping through their fingers right now. And, you know, even if you just look at the game they're playing and the, the, the half they're on now, CT, Anubis, with eight rounds to the other side, it's a very difficult position to pull yourself back from. Far more so, they need a hero, they need something to believe in. But this map has been lacking that. And look at that round timeline, horrendous. Not even bomb plants, not even close rounds really for Ecstatic, blown out of this map. Looking to amount yet another monumental comeback of their careers. Patient for G2 in this pistol, but they will creep closer into those dual Berettas, oh so deadly. Three pairs. Go on. Let's get weird. Sorin. Oh, this is going to be a bloodbath. Salazar is just responsible for so much here. And, and if he falls, that, that floods the B site. Kraken would have to adjust so quickly. Nodios will be able to support him somewhat. But I, I'm worried that if Salazar doesn't at least slow them down on this push, it is just a bloodbath. It is a, a KO hit for G2. And so we really need these Doolies to step up. You're going to have quick trade potential from Kraken at least to swing in on Dual Berettas to try regain control. But this is going to come down to some very, very fast fights. Some brawly Counter-Strike down in dark. Misses on the duelies. Kragen pulls up wow. and will keep it even. They take the pace out of the lower hit at least. That flood of G2 players can't come in. But somehow Nico has already crept up in a CT. That kill should be dead to rights. They've just got to get past Nodios. And even as Patty's able to break away, even as he's able to dodge capture from Nico in the spawn, will that be the fighting chance for Ecstatic? It shouldn't be. They're hounding him down. They chase him down. And Queenix oh. now spotted. Gets the bomb away at least. One kill in the right direction. But so much more to do for Queenix. The man who got it all going on Vertigo is locked out to open up the pistol of Anubis. G2, nine rounds straight. And with a pistol round under their belt, they are chasing down that victory, the one that eluded them on Vertigo. The what? one that felt like it got away. What terrifying pacing of that pistol round. Not just the silence for almost a minute as Salazar A and Ds, but Nico gets all the way into spawn from that midwalk. And even in the 3v3, everyone stops to let Nico fight Patty. And they even group to hunt him down. No clutches today for Queenix, no chance in this pistol, and it feels meant to be double digits, at least for G2. And even though this last map ended horrifically, this third map started scarily, I think reassurance is the right word for G2. If they take that in their stride, and make this as clean as it seems to be. Mac 10s mauling in A and barely a casualty. Ten of the four. Yeah, you know what we're kind of seeing here for Ecstatic is when all hope is lost, when you're truly hopeless, hope is kind of the easiest thing to find. You know, when it's truly dark, the, the light shines the brightest. And that's what we saw happen for Ecstatic on that last map. They were able to build something great when they felt like they had nothing to lose. But now, now that they have everything to gain, now that they are all believing, it's opened them up to this colossal heartbreak. And they, and they just can't hit that same level they were on. And I think that was always going to be such a big ask. All it took was a couple of rounds from Monacy. It slowed the roll of Ecstatic. It got them in their heads a bit. And now the kind of gravity of the situation they're in. 
with their toughest opposition they've ever faced at the most important juncture of their careers, so far at least. It's all looking to just be a bit too much for Ecstatic. Oh, look at this gap as well. Sure, it's a Temple Smoke. He will be running into the A split. It's being held by Ecstatic, but a Molly behind the smoke. Cordon's off Patty. He can throw another one. Oh, and it's all up to the A main fight. Salazar finds his third kill of the map, but he is all the stands between G2 and 11 rounds. I don't think anyone can stop this now. G2 don't overstep the mark. They lock out Heaven with a Molotov. The bomb plant comes in. It's a big flank for Ecstatic with it all on the line. The weight of this 3v3 is enormous. This is essentially your hope for the game, for any chance of a comeback. It's not a bad way to start, but Nico and Monacy Ooh, taking the heavens yeah. away. Monacy left up in the clutch. And a 1v3 begins. Monacy moves in, gets close, and is ready to rob this from Ecstatic. They're off the bomb, but he adjusts in time. This one's wild. They tap it again. Monacy's playing with his oh, food, oh, and no. he will elude capture for now. But chase down. It's going to be close with no kit, but Ecstatic, they stop Monacy on his way to a 1v3, and they just barely take that round over the line. Oh my goodness, that's a, a mess. So you wonder if he stays in the smoke, he might actually win that, just swinging the knife and hoping for the best, but he's running a, a crazy route around the site, doing laps. My goodness. Nice try for Monacy, but... Just enough time for Ecstatic to keep this game going and keep believing. Not inspire any faith or is it just a sigh of relief that they didn't get humiliated in the one on three? They don't really look too proud about that round eight either way. And I like the pause. Before they continue. Their first round breaking a streak of 10 in a row for G2. Talk about it and get on the same page. This is your last chance in Copenhagen. You can see the difference, though, both in the player camps and in, in how the game's gone. Like, G2, I think they were a victim of overconfidence on Vertigo. I think they, they felt like the game was over. And after you learn that lesson once, and then you're given a shot to redeem yourself when you're as experienced and as favored as G2 are, they're not going to look to make that same mistake again. And so you won't have a G2 that's loose and keen to make mistakes. You have a G2 that's determined and well-drilled with everyone stepping up. So it is a very different game for Ecstatic. A very different ask of making this comeback happen this time. And they'd never dodge that danger that if they fall short, the game is out of their hands. Oh, some clinical clearing from Nico in middle and he knows his angles, but Patty just hides down below the stairs. He has to tuck back now low in the A site. No one shoots off that flash. Queenix doesn't know that they're even closer than Hooksy jiggling. He's trying to bait, set up Nexa in the corner. Queenix goes for the clear, but the AK finds that clean shot. Patty with a lot of pressure. This flank, it may be coming in, but it may all be too late. It's certainly too little as G2 enter the site. Salazar provides cover from the top, but he's gone after one. And Patty, there's just nowhere to hide. Four on two. G2 feeling good for the game right now. It's Nodios and Kragen against the world. Nadios, very, very quiet start here. Sets himself Ooh. off. Final bullet connects to Hoopsie. As he okay. bends that one to come through. It's now all eyes on Nexa. But he will find the first. Ready for Nadios. Ready for the swing. Knows he's still got him trapped up in the heavens. And Nexa oh, oh, no. just falls shy on that spray. What? That's super awkward for Nexa. I was ready to sing his praises at the end of that round there. I think he thought he'd done it too. Bit of an overstep and a clutch given over. That's now both clutches going the way of Ecstatic. Really, it feels overcommitted. There's so many, you know, sure, you're confident in your ability to take the fight there, but Nex has such a good position. He can just play with his food, waste the time down. Hey, bro, for Nodios, a slow start, but a key Finally. clutch one. 
You stand and deliver versus a guy who's looked really good for the G2 squad throughout this game. That's nice. Another timeout called for G2. They're trying to manage these emotions. They're trying to manage their ambitions yeah. here. They just want to put this one to rest. At least, right, if you're looking for more silver linings for the G2 squad, similar situation to what we've seen in these last two rounds is that even though Ecstatic are winning them, it is at one tremendous cost. Both times, one player surviving. Crazy two on four for Ecstatic. <laughs> they, they just pull these rounds out of nowhere. And even if you look down the scoreboard, it's not like they have many stars shining bright. It's only Kragen who's on a positive game and then some competing with Monacy. What I'll say is that the, the vibe is not the same as Vertigo for Ecstatic to run away with this in the mental game, but it will make it far more impressive if they somehow did. Yeah. Because G2, this is a, a team that isn't set to crumble right now. A team that's kept everything in check and is playing some sound Counter-Strike where all the individuals are stepping up. There's no real weak links here other than Hooksy. All the stars are there. And as you said, coming into this game, G2 will not be celebrating until this is done, right? They maybe underestimated their opponent on that previous map. They got ahead of themselves with some cheeky T-side rounds and... Well, you won't find them doing that with Elimination right there knocking on the door. This game is tight. Uxi inside of the smoke. Nate comes in, won't give away his position. We do have a flash being laid up to go through. It goes further and Nodios turns for the kill. He still got a teammate, they know about this, but Patty drops in from mid. Now they can concede the site. They have a lot of space and they have the bomb. That's a huge problem for G2. Walking the smoke is not the answer for Nico. Straight into Kragen. Flash through, trying to tee up Hunter, but not even he wants Ooh. to throw it all the way on the tag. Catches the molly. That at least blocks it. That's quite nice to actually give him a bit of a leg up in taking this space. Kragen should be ready for this, but uh -oh. doesn't make it any easier. Tag no nine of Hunter. He's got 20 seconds, and they're watching the bomb from afar. So even as he deals with Patty, the trade should be there immediately. Won't find it as Queenix swings out from the stairs. Good interplay there between Ecstatic. Slowly but surely piecing these rounds together. That was the force buy from G2, trying to capitalize on all the money that's been done, uh, all the money damage that's been done across these last few rounds. What a play for Patty here, where he drops out and flanks. That drops the bomb. The bomb feels like it's in the wrong position of two anyway. It should be outside of B with the bulk, but either way, I don't think G2 expected that much resistance being sent on a flank so early in the round. Nice gap for Patty. Slowly but surely, Ecstatic are believing in this again. Oh, don't do this to me once more, Harry. Don't play with my heart. And like we said, the difference here, this isn't a deflated G2. This is a G2 in good form. Yeah. And so Ecstatic are really having to earn this win. Three rounds in a row, though, breaking that 10-round streak of G2. Maybe steps. But it is stood up. Norios. Finally finding a clutch after numerous attempts. This would be a nice confidence boosting round for Salazar if he's able to make that AWP sing from Ivy. They jump in, they get past, and that's oh. going to sell his teammate out. Only the oh, one no. kill off the AWP, and they, they beeline towards it. They go and retrieve oh, it. Another kill out of Hooksy this time. This one's starting to fall apart. This was just Glocks, and now G2 are posted to win the round. Queenix with one onto Hunter as he loops his way back in through the spawn. They got one more rifle left to get past, and they can't do it. Gotta These go. Glocks, the bane of Ecstatic, and it might be the round that lets them down. That missed shot from Salazar's AWP with Nodios hung out to dry. They do it on Glocks. And G2 are celebrating like that round has won them the game because it, it very likely has. That is a crushing defeat towards Ecstatic. That is an ugly setup as well, the right? You're expecting more of a contact play in front of B, but with Glocks, G2 just jump around the corner. Salah's a one miss. Even though he hits it, his teammate is still dead, sitting out in the open with a back shot from Glocks. And Monacy taps out that Orpa who has no helmet. Hell on earth for Ecstatic. The worst possible way and time to lose a round like that. And that could yeah. spell the end of their Copenhagen run. That, that is just a back-breaking round. That is the, the, the round that does you in. And, and if that ends up being the one that lets them down, that is a round that they will not soon forget. They were forging a path to another comeback.
They're up against Glocks in a full eco from G2. And it's not just that you fall down to the Glocks, which is already the, the worst type of round to lose. It's the fact that it comes on the back of so many clutched rounds. Now you don't have the longevity. Now you're at the full mercy of a G2 that are pumped up. I like this call for G2s to so just stay like fully grouped to make sure you're just trading your kills here. You know Ecstatic have limited money, but Ecstatic have made the perfect read. They put four players on this bomb site and they've got a flash set up in main. Timing is everything on this flash right now. Nade chips away. First one comes through. G2 try and dodge. They're running into walls. They're running into bullets. And somehow a four on two emerges. Ecstatic with nothing to play with and everything to play for. Still fight back against G2. This horde of MP9s comes running and gunning. And Kragen won't miss a beat. Bomb dropped. Want to see in the clutch again, but it's not meant to be. Ecstatic, they do not give up nor go down without a fight. You can win a Glock Eco, you've still got to earn your stripes against this young Danish squad. Eight rounds now out of nowhere. The resilience required, uh, the ability to answer back after falling down in such an ugly way, that is, that is unreal from Ecstatic. At every turn, I feel like they've surprised us throughout yeah. this uh, throughout this series how, and how, maybe even throughout the Major so far. How many times can we write this team off been so ready to they just, G2 too. They just won't give up. And in some sense, you know, they, they, they've gained G2's respect. They have. They, they have to have. With how this game's gone, every time G2 think they're ready to win and run away, run away with it, Ecstatic have something to answer back with. Honestly, he's covering so Nico can walk through, but he went a bit early inside of that Molotov. Honestly, he remains on the angle. And Patty plays passive position. Honestly, holding for the uncrouched, but Patty times it well, avoids disaster and dodges the flash. G2, they set up men in middle and they go back. This is a really good read out of Ecstatic when that mid contact doesn't come in. Wow, they shuffle the third player over towards B. They battle oh for Dark. God. Nodios narrowly eludes burning in that molly. But Queenix with the backstab no dropping way. in. It's just the one and done. Still Ecstatic. Right place, right time on this stack at the B site. Two more players left to break through for G2. And Patsy can't keep them at bay. Salazar, the one who let them down with a missed orb shot in the Glock round, is it. the one faced with this 1v2 clutch. No. Even if he's no. given this first fight an overstep from Hooksy, now it's Monacy the one to beat. Monacy the clutch king of the series. Monacy the one to end it all. As he rounds the corner, Salazar <laughs> plays right into Monacy's hands. And if there's been one dependable piece, it's been that Monacy AWP. The salvation of G2 has arrived, and it's Monacy. Was there ever any doubt? He never lets you down. He really doesn't. And what a perfect time to pull up with a clutch. That's a backbreaker. That's a money breaker. And even if Hooksy, who in his defense has had a couple of crucial entry rounds on the T side of this map, that full Glock eco with the M4 picked up and right there as well to trade out Hunter coming through the smoke. He almost oversteps, he does overstep, but at least he has Monacy back in the site and ready to send G2 to a 2-2 matchup to still fight for those playoffs. It almost felt like they threw that opportunity away and walked into Ecstatic's hands on this third map. But are we finally ready to write off the Danes or do they have a final wind? No one wants to fall early for G2. It's measured to open up this round. They've been in many a moment where they could have ended this series and they want this one to be the knockout punch. This is as easy as it gets for G2. Now it really and that's is. not the bad way for it to start. Nico opens onto Nodios. They know about Kragen, who's trapped out on an island over here at Long, getting chased down. Ooh. He'll put up the double. In the meantime, Monacy did reclaim one on that AWP. So he's still keeping G2 afloat, but the bomb is down over at Long and Kragen's just found it. 
Monacy's rooting back through the spawn. Another kill from Monacy. The record will show that when it really mattered, when G2 needed someone to get behind, Monacy was there every step of the way. And so now that bomb has been recovered. The one danger of the round that Kragen bought to the pitcher has been removed. This aggro push up through mid for Queenix could get dodged altogether. And if that happens, it's Salazar alone oh over in this B site. Still a great flank timing. Will he get there in time? They haven't crossed in yet. Queenix has got a chance at the double here, but it's got to be clean. First round found his next, but he can't convert onto Monacy. G2's hero, the man in the cape and cloak, looking to run away with this game right at the close and stop Ecstatic in their tracks. Salazar can't win this. Surely not. Playing through the smoke, trying to rob it to time, but he can't arrive. And so the bomb is planted. G2 have got it teed up and it's all on the back of Monacy in this third map. G2 lock it in. An ecstatic heartbreak across the series. The Danish squad with a fantastic run throughout that opening stage. Here in the elimination game versus G2 pushing them to their very limits. Yeah, they have nothing but pride surely.